I dug out another piece of cardboard so I could perform some more cardboard magic with the help of CAD. Cardboard Ada design. This piece now fits nicely inside the frame. This will reinforce this whole panel here and it will be hidden inside but still adding support to it when I tie it all together. So now that I have this piece completed and the outside piece completed, the next thing I'm going to do is transfer these over to my steel plate and then I'm going to cut those out with my plasma cutter. I've converted my hoist to a makeshift fab table with just some uh, steel tube bag laying around and I'm going to lay these templates on this is the steel plate in the eighth inch. I've got them arranged so I can get uh, you know the most out of this piece of plate. I'm just going to trace it out now. This is why it was important to make a good template to start with. Minimize the amount of work I'm going to have to do when I cut this out and fit it onto the truck. But certainly not my best work. That machine, I just jumped right in and started cutting. I did not adjust any of the settings before. I didn't do any practice runs, so I kind of had to adjust them on the fly. I haven't used that plasma cutter in at least a year. It did a good job. And my templates are surprisingly still close. I'm going to go back now and grind away. I'm glad that they invented grinders because it's going to make these things look a lot better. I'm going to clean up these edges. There's not a ton to do, just to kind of get the jagged edge off of there, some of, that, some of that slag. So we'll do that next, and then we'll see how they fit on the truck. I have that inner plate now clamped in place. You'll notice that there's a bunch of random holes. I didn't really measure them out. I just eyeballed them. All I was trying to accomplish was more contact points so I can spot weld this reinforcement plate to the inside of the frame, to the existing metal there. Um, if you look down a little further, see that jack. So that cross member is not a lot stronger part of the frame. And what I noticed uh, let's take it some measurements and also like use my good old eyeball micrometer that spring mount right there looked like it was just teetering in just a smidge not a lot just a little bit so I wanted to take some weight off it right there and jack it up ahead of the way and that relaxed this area and I was able to kind of give it a few whacks of the mini sledge just so that it looks straight enough before I go welding start you know welding all this in so that's my next thing I'm gonna get my welder out I'm gonna start working my way around and welding this inside plate first tight quarters baby
I went around and kind of stitched section by section on that plate and I made my way mostly all the way around. For the most part the welds were okay. There was a few areas where there's definitely some evil hiding in there. You know when you're working on something this nasty to begin with the quality of your weld is only going to be good as the well the operator <laughs> for one and two the quality of the material you're working with there's there's some hidden rust that was kind of popping through and that was kind of contaminating a couple spots of the weld but it's not bad at all considering where it started and where it is now um, now the next stage this can get enclosed you're not going to see this anymore so if there is any ugly goodbye won't see you <laughs> when that cover plate goes on so before i forget this is eighth plate 11 gauge steel this is the new stuff this is the one i cut out to cap that off you can see how i mean it's nice it's some heavy stuff just so you can see what i cut out Here's some sections for you to look at and check it out. Look at how nasty that is. Okay, this is what used to be down there. So this is what I was talking about before. I mean, obviously, I would hope nobody would try to patch over this. But you can see how thin it is, especially where it's gone. And then up here, I mean, you're talking maybe, that might be 40 thou, you know, less than half it's a probably original thickness. This was a little further down the frame where it started getting thicker. So better, a lot better, but not great. So that's why I was talking about how I, I want to remove this stuff. I wouldn't just cap over or put a patch over something like this because you try to weld to it and that weld is gonna break. You know, there's, even if you did like what I did down here where I gave myself several spots. I mean, that would maybe help, you know, to attach, reinforce, but nothing like cutting out the bad and putting in some new. So that's what we're doing now. That's, in my opinion, that's the proper way to do this. Here, it's lined up right where I want it. So I got one mini tack, and uh, I'm gonna kind of stitch my way around and kind of force it into place, because obviously it's, it's loose and there's a lot of metal to move. Here we go. fine oh yeah I'm liking it I like it can we give it a little bit on the bottom now we're gonna want to suck that in next let's get that going okay yeah 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 right I want to focus on that leaf spring mount next because that's where I was worried about the strength before I'm gonna get just the right amount of pressure and that seems to be close. Okay, looking good. We got full contact all the way down here. There's a lot of metal right there to fuse to. Another nice day outside, so I took advantage of it. I rolled this thing out and I ground all the welds just to make them look a little bit nicer. Um, the frame is capped in now, so now that that's complete, I can go to the bottom where it was rusted out down here. You can see it's a little wavy because I was kind of hammering it as I was hammering it and clamping it as I was welding that outside plate in. But that uh, whole bottom plate. Um, I wanted to cut out anyway, so I'm going to do that next, I'm going to get the cutoff wheel, open that up, and then I'll make a template just like I did for these other ones, and then I can weld that in.
Here's what I've accomplished. This is the bottom of that frame I've been working on. This is, like I was saying, that's why I cut it out of there. It's all nasty and rusted out. So this got cut off, you know, pretty square. Gave me a good lines to work with. My template that I made, just again, out of some cardboard, made it extra wide. That way I had some room to trim it in. And also the original frame has kind of a radius edge and I wanted to match that, you know, throughout. So leaving that extra material, I was able to come back and uh, hammer form this radius in, and then trim that up between, you know, this repair piece and then the truck itself. And I got this to fit nice and square. Um, there is a couple weird little tabs and stuff I had to add, and this kind of flares uh, up this way a little bit just because of the the way the frame starts to ramp up, so it's got a, a little bit of complex angles going on. All the edges have been beveled, give me some plenty of room to fill it with weld. Um, I'll show you the frame next, but <laughs> look at how much better that is. It's going to be basically a fully rebuilt frame, better than new, when I'm all done here. Well now we're sitting under the truck. You can see inside of there, that's where I welded that inner plate. And then there's that outer plate and that boxes it all the way in up at that shock mount. And then here's where I cut out the bottom. And this is just kind of where some extra weird crusty stuff was. So I just cut that out and I made a small tab just to kind of, you know, fill that back with metal again. It also kind of helped to, to locate it a bit, but you can see I got a, just a small hole, little void I got to fill there where that radius corner, um, there's like a double wrapped edge that's welded together in the factory. And it ended up just kind of being a little too weird for me, so I ground it out, and I'm just going to fill that hole. But underneath here, uh, it fits really nice all the way around. I'm only holding it as, as well as I can here. But when I start welding it in, I will um, use a couple of magnets just to hold it in place, and then I'll tack it and get it all situated. But really happy with it. It fits nicely, and by the time it's welded and, and ground in, I think it's going to be hardly noticeable. Time to party.
It's gonna be sweet. Come with me, we're going on a little adventure under the truck here. Okay. There it is. That's the finished frame rail. Looking nice. It went from being the worst part of the truck to the best part of the truck now. It's looking sextastic. I'm loving it. Now that that's complete, I'm going to be going over and doing the same thing on this side because as you can see, it's starting to do the same crap over here. Um, the rust is not nearly as bad as what that side was, but I did hit it with a needle scaler and it opened up some cracks and it's got rust and dirt and stuff in there. So once these brake lines get pulled out of the way, I'll be able to cut this open and do the same process on it. Once that section's finished, as nice as the other side, then I'm going to work my way down each frame rail all the way to the very back and I'm going to cut and grind all that open and box it in so that it's completely reinforced and rebuilt, then I'll have a nice strong foundation for the future plans on this build. Now that we're back up top, we'll just take one more look at the frame. As you can see, that's where, well, it's kind of the wires are in the way, but that's where I'll be working my same magic on the frame, fixing that up. And we'll just box it all the way in down this side and, and this side. So just stay tuned for updates. I'm going to be posting up some more stuff as I go and how this turns out. I'm really looking forward to getting the frame finished up back here so that I can start working on the more exciting stuff with the engine swap in the future.